Hi everyone, my name is Unalinda Marumo. If you are new to the channel, a warm welcome to you. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Um, yes, I am back with part two of our reinforced concrete frame quantity takeoff series. And in today's video, we are going to focus on the concrete columns. Now, if you haven't already watched part one, I highly recommend doing so to ensure you can follow along with our measurement process. Enjoy. I will be using the standard system of measuring building work as guide to measuring our quantities in this exercise. And in today's video, I will be referencing pages uh, 24, uh, 26, and page 27. Now, let's take a closer look at the contents of these pages, starting with page 24. So page 24 starts with the classification of concrete work and um, clause 1, sub clause 1 states that concrete is to be classified according to compressive strength or mix. And then when we go to clause 2, it talks about the concrete components, right, and gives uh, valuable insights into the specifics of measuring different concrete um, elements, as you can see. Concrete is measured in cubic meters for surface blinding, surface beds, surface beds cast in panels, uh, footings, bases, underpinnings, slabs inclusive of beans and inverted beans, isolated beans, lintels, um, stairs inclusive of, of landings and beams, walls, and of interest to us at this moment um, are the columns, right? So they're measured in cubic meters. Now let's have a look at the formwork for the columns and we will find that on page well 26 and page 27 uh, deals with additional requirements for formwork to columns and the so subclause 20 states that columns other than circular and partly circular columns shall be measured in square meters right and then subclause 35 states that formwork to columns of different shapes shall be given separately Right, and the subclause 36 states that formwork to columns shall be separated into groups for columns not exceeding 3.5 meters in height above bearing level, and thereafter for total heights above bearing level in successive stages of 1.5 meters. Right now, with this background and essential measuring guidelines, let's jump right into today's um, exercise. Now, let's take a closer look at the first drawing we'll be using for this exercise. Um, this drawing provides us with a clear reference for our columns, right? And below the drawing, there's a table that lists the reference numbers for each column. You'll see there A1 and A4, C1 and C4, and we can also see the sizes of our columns, right? And as you can see, we have a total of 12 columns in the structure. Now, these columns are divided into two main types, right? We have four L-shaped columns. There we, that's A1 and A4 and C1 and C4. These are our L-shaped columns and they are sized at 500 by 500 millimeters. And then we have the square shaped columns, right? And these are sized at 250 by 250 millimeters. Now moving on to the second drawing. This is basically a floor plan layout um, and it provides us with a visual understanding of the concrete frame, right? I have highlighted some crucial elements to help you follow along. Now in green, you can see the perimeter columns, right? These are the perimeter columns and they're in green. And then we have our internal columns and I've highlighted these in yellow. We have both perimeter beams, right, measuring 250 by 700 millimeters deep. And then we have our internal beams uh, measuring 250 by 600 millimeters deep. So this is a graphic representation of where our two beams meet. That is the 600 millimeter deep beam and that is the 700 millimeter deep beam and that would be either column B1 or column B4, right? So that is how um, it looks and the reason why I'm making mention of this is because when we measure the height of the concrete column, right, where the two different beams meet, we measure the height of the concrete column to the underside 
of the deepest beam. So this would apply to column B1 and B4, right? Where um, the 600 millimeter deep beam and the 700 millimeter deep beam meet. All right, now let's take a look at the third and final drawing, which provides us with a section through our concrete structure. Now, this drawing is crucial as it gives us information about the height of the columns. Um, as you can see, the height of the of the concrete frame from the top of the column bases, right? There's the column base, the top of the column base, to the top of the slab is 5,500 millimeters, right? Now, the concrete for the columns will be measured from the top of the column base to the underside of the deepest beam, as discussed earlier. With this background in mind, I think we are ready to jump into the actual measuring exercise. So I've prepared a measuring list to guide us through the items that we are going to be measuring under the concrete column section. And I want to take you th through these items step by step. Uh, so we will be measuring the reinforced concrete um, to the columns, uh, the formwork to the columns, and then we are going to deduct the backfilling material as explained in the previous video. Now let's start first with the first item, the concrete to the columns. Now, these columns have the same concrete mix, so as per the standard system, we'll be measuring all of them under this description. All right, and the description reads, reinforced concrete, 30 MPA slash 19 millimeter stone in columns. So obviously we know the sizes of our columns. The one thing that we still need to determine is the height of the columns right now to determine the heights of our columns we need to obviously account for the different beam depths okay so we will start with the perimeter columns right the perimeter columns are a1 to a4 b1 and b4 c1 to c4 right now we're going to take the 5500 millimeter height their 5,500 millimeter height and deduct the 700 millimeter deep beam, right? And this results in a height of 4,800 millimeters. And this is applicable to all the perimeter columns, all right? So let's go to our dimension column. There we're going to start with the L shaped columns, all right? So we'll put down there 0 0.50 by 0 0.25 by 4.80. We multiply that by four and then the next set of dimensions for the l-shaped columns are 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by 4.8 meters and then we multiply that by four now moving on to the next set of dimensions we have the square shaped columns located on the perimeter and these are measuring 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by 4.8 meters and then we multiply these by six. Now, finally, for the internal columns, and we said that uh, the internal columns are B2 and B3, um, we're going to measure those to the underside of the deepest beam, which is 600 millimeters. So we're going to do the same thing that we did uh, to determine the height of um, the perimeter columns, right? So we're going to take the 5,500 millimeters and then we're going to deduct the deepest beam here, which is 600 millimeters. And that gives us a height of 4,900 millimeters. So we go to our dimension column and we put there 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by 4.9 meters. And then we multiply that by 2 because we have two internal columns. Now moving on to the formwork to the columns. Formwork to columns is measured for the same height as that of the concrete which means we're going to measure formwork from the top of the column base to the underside of the deepest beam all right now let's break down the measurement for the two different column shapes the first description is for the l-shaped columns and it reads formwork to sides of l-shaped columns including propping up exceeding 3.5 meters but not exceeding 5 meters above column bases all right when measuring the formwork for l-shaped columns we treat them similarly to square shaped columns as you can see in this image here the formwork for the l-shaped column covers the column like a square and a recess is formed 
using some type of boxing method, right? Now, the critical point to remember is that the description for the formwork should be detailed to account for the unique shape and additional propping required for columns, right? Now, moving to our dimension column, we are going to put there 2 meters by 4.8 by four and this is for the l-shaped columns the reason why it's two meters is because it's a 500 by 500 um, millimeter column so we say 500 multiplied by four and that gives us two meters our referencing there a1 and a4 c1 and c4 the second description pertains to the square shaped columns right now given that the only difference between the l-shaped columns and the square shaped columns is their shape we can simplify the description to ditto but square shaped columns ditto this means we apply the same measurement rules as the l-shaped columns to the square shaped columns right and this is pretty straightforward we know that our columns are 250 by 250 so we say 250 multiplied by 4 and that gives us a meter so we say a meter multiplied by 4.8 these are for the uh, perimeter columns right so we multiply that by 6 and then there's the referencing there and then for the internal columns right b2 and b3 we say 1 multiplied by 4.90 and then we multiply that by 2 because we have two of those now let's tackle the last item on our measuring list and this is the backfilling now if you watched our first video you'll recall that we measured the excavations and backfilling to the holes and we mentioned that when we move on to items like the bases blinding and columns we would be deducting the backfilling from the volume of those items I just mentioned, right? In the previous video, we did precisely that. We deducted the backfilling from the volume of the blinding and the column bases. Now, in this description, we are specifically deducting the backfilling to the columns. We are going to utilize the measurements we used for the reinforced concrete to columns right but this time it won't be for the full height of 4.8 meters and 4.9 meters instead we will measure from the top of the base to ground level right which is a thousand millimeters deep all right so we're going to say for the l-shaped columns 0 0.50 by 0 0.25 by one meters deep and then we multiply that by four because we have four L-shaped columns. And then the second set of dimensions for the L-shaped columns is 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by one meters. And we multiply that by four. And then for the square shaped columns, we are going to say 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by one meter. And we're going to multiply that by eight because we have eight square shaped columns, right? Now let's go to the description there. Should have started with that, sorry. Uh, we're going to say deduct backfilling to trenches and holes as before and extra over all excavations for carting away surplus excavated material to a site selected by the contractor. And just like that, we have reached the last step of our exercise. Thanks for watching. Um, in the upcoming video, we're going to continue with the quantity takeoff process for the remaining elements of our reinforced concrete frame. And if you're finding this series as informative and helpful as I hope it is, I'd love to hear from you, right? Drop a comment down below to share your thoughts with me. Um, and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay in the loop with our entire series. See you in the next one.